<laughs> All right, so we got how Drake feels about social media. Because I enjoy social media. It's good for so many things, you know? Uh, I've met so many great people. So many great songs have come from me being active and me actually checking my DM or me, you know, um, you know, uh, I've had great friendships form over social media. I've met great women over social media. Um, just because, you know, a few bad apples want to violate, it would be a shame for me to just like, be like, ah, I can't deal with this. It also is just like, I mean, it, build, it builds strength, you know, as, as tough as it may be, it, it definitely strengthens your character. I mean, I've heard it all, I've seen it all. I wonder how many females slide in Drake's DMs, but just, anyways, move started off. I just. <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! Oh my bad! My bad! My bad! Yeah, no. You know what? This is this is one of those clips that I think was a great reminder for a lot of those people who don't like social media, mm. because as you can see, he's not out here saying, "Man, I love social media." He's just letting you know that I understand the power of it, right? For those who know his story, he was technically found through social media, right? He mm -hmm. connected with you said the, the guy's name was Young Prince. It was. It was like Jazz Prince. Oh, Jazz Prince, yep, mm -hmm. on MySpace, who found out, who, who met Drake uh, on MySpace, and he was a part of Lil Wayne's camp. So, yeah. like, stretching back to even how he was found, it, it had something to do with social media. So I think he does a great job of continuing to stay engaged and dialoguing or connecting with his people so that he can continue to build opportunities. And, you know, I know you'll talk about this here in a little bit, but just the concept of how he's leveraged even the idea around memes and how that's helped take his career and his music game to a whole nother level. So I, I think it's a great reminder for those of us who don't enjoy social media as much is that if you can operate out of that first principle behind authenticity and find a way to do it where you can just show you being you mm -hmm. and not so much in terms of, well, are they going to like it? Are they going to receive it? Are they going to respond to it? And I know that's part of it. It matters, but don't let that be the driving force behind why you do it. And, and, and that's definitely one of those things that I think can be uh, helpful for anyone building right now. Like, yeah, I, I don't like it or I don't love it, but I know how to use it because it's important. And I, I think it's only going to grow. Like the, the world is not about to, you know, uh, uh, quarantine out of social media. Like it's only going to grow. Uh, more, more, yeah, it's more. Not going Everything nowhere. is going to rely. Yeah, it's going to revolve around it. Like even w when we look at what's happening now, they're saying a large part of companies are pretty much letting go of physical office spaces mm -hmm. because they're not seeing a need for office space. They're like, yo, if we just navigated, you know, six, seven months working virtually, yeah, and we did just fine. You know, there are some reports showing that there's almost a thirty percent increase in the economy over the last few months now. Mm -hmm virtually then they're like yo what's the point of yeah. the physical space now i understand maybe just once in a while we can all come together and kumbaya but for the most part i think social media is only going to increase if that shifts happen or when that shift happens i should say it's only going to increase especially with our demographic actually wanting more of the freedom and mm -hmm. wanting to work from anywhere or work on their own time so any anybody who transitions and pivots into that space is going to have more of that opportunity so yeah social media is here to stay man yeah, um, I I love what he said because he embraces uh, social media where maybe other rappers don't, where, you know, other entertainers kind of just stay very low key and does like the pictures and the videos and that's it. But Drake is very, very engaged with social media. He really has you know, his hand to to what's happening on trends, on other people's platforms, things like that. These past couple of months, because he's about to drop any time. Certified Lover Boy is about to drop at any moment. Uh, hopefully by the time this comes out, he does a surprise drop. But we never know with Drake, right? And him understanding that people have been wanting his music they always do he could drop an album tomorrow and they're gonna want new music on by the next day right that's just kind of the the age that we're in but ev he tends to like make comments here and be on certain lives over here he's popped in on dj d nice and versus battles and 
uh, popped in the shade room 17 million times. Why? Because they know that people are going to screenshot it and send it, to, send it to the blogs. If he has something coming out, he wants to stay relevant, right? I think he, all the way back from, I don't think it's coincidence that he showed pictures of his son. And I don't think it's coincidence that he let people inside his estate and showed more of that. I don't think it's a coincidence that he did an exclusive rap radar interview, which that clip came from. So shout out to B. Dot and Elliot, right? I don't think he does anything by coincidence. He literally had a battle with Meek Mill and used a whole bunch of memes that was from social media. He totally yeah. embraced it and crushed Meek Mill. No offense, Meek Mill. We love you. Truly do. However, um, you got killed. You got killed because he used what was undefeated, which is the Internet. You cannot, in this day and age, defeat the Internet. They have memes for everything. They have jokes for everything. They have a video ready. They have Photoshop ready. They have everything ready for when you mess up. They have a GIF for you. They have a meme for you. They have you in a whole different outfit. Everything like that. And Drake embraces that instead of complains about it. He likes it and reposts it. Instead of being like, man, they're all trolls or hides more behind the scenes. It, he doesn't necessarily do that. Right. And I think that's what keeps him so high up in the game, because whereas, like I said, other artists kind of shy away from uh, social media, it he embraces it. So we uh, on our on our Facebook live show, we went over 50 cent one time and we were talking about the whole G unit situation and Lloyd banks did not want to get into social media. He always said, yo, if Biggie and Tupac were, you know, were alive, would they be on social media? And 50 was like, yo, I think Biggie would have the most fire, Instagram in the world. What are you yeah. talking about? Like, I think Pac would be super dope on live. Like, what are you talking about? Right. And it hurt Lloyd Banks down the line because he wasn't relevant. So you're good for a certain generation who understood life before social media. But now we're in a time that we don't know anything else but social media. There are kids who've only known social media, right? There's an age range that's done both. And then there's an age range that had nothing to do with social media. If you want to be relevant for all generations, you have to be on social media. All generations. Gen Z, X, all these great stuff, millennials, all that great stuff. You have to be active and relevant and doing different strategic moves to be a part of what's happening and what people are talking about. And it's not even about just let me do pictures and videos. It's about who are you engaging with? Who are you uh, collaborating with in your industries? How could like it's Drake really, really, really like gets it. And I don't think it's a coincidence that he is number one because he's one of those people that fully embraces it compared to others. That's I keep repeating it, but I want really for people to understand that because if you are not embracing it, you are going to be average. If you're not embracing it, you're just going to be a typical business person, a typical uh, personal brand that kind of gets it, kind of doesn't, but there's people who really study it, who strategically launches things, who are super creative, not necessarily in a style-wise, but just from a vision-wise, and they execute on it, and that's what people connect with. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. went off on that one. Yeah, no, that's good, man. That's so good. 
I love the collaboration piece too. Like if you think about some of the connections that happen organically through social, yeah. just because there isn't such a barrier between you and whoever it is. Right. Again. Mm -hmm. And and like, think of the exact, I keep going to this because I think it's so dope. Like three episodes into the podcast, Rick Ross post a clip of what, you know, what we did for him or or at least a part of your, your uh, segment Mm -hmm. on his own story or on his own page. So it's like, just that connection piece when you're doing things from a pure heart and you're adding value into the world it's like that connection the ability to collaborate with who whomever it may be and he's done it like Mm -hmm. he's collaborated with uh toronto comedians and Mm -hmm. and other people on social at least use their either certain clips of their voiceovers or parts of their skits so he's done it on a multiple multiple levels so i think it it, that collaboration piece also goes unnoticed because Mm -hmm. i think when you're in business it's very easy to just keep your head down and say all right i'm focused on here that's all i need to do and i don't need to worry about anybody else but again i think if anything 2020 has proven that more than ever you need more than just one thing and more importantly those relationships if you keep them strong all throughout imagine if if whomever your greatest collaborator is or the person you could have had the greatest collaboration with you don't touch base with them until covid happens right it's like that, that even if the, the the partnership and the value exchange is phenomenal you're more likely to get kind of you know blocked or put off to the side if i haven't heard from you or we haven't really interacted for an extended period of time and you're only reaching out when you need something i know that's a pet peeve of mine i'm sure it is of yours it's like man don't do that don't don't hit don't reach out and then 24 hours later. So, uh, right. you know, I was, you, you know, it's like, come on, man. Right. But in, in even with COVID, like we got to think about what has been the talk of the town, which is it hasn't been any of these CNN, uh, ESPN, all the stuff that we used to watch. We're watching Versus and we're right. watching DJ D nice. Like, Artists who really embrace the platforms, they're winning. The Weeknd did a whole concert on uh, TikTok, a whole oh, wow. virtual conf- uh, concert on TikTok. Like they're finding different creative ways to still connect with their uh, audience and their fans, regardless if they can go on tour or not. Who says you can't do a virtual tour? Who says you still can't connect with your fans in a in a more intimate way? And like, and, and I would love one day. And I sent you this in the DMs, all the stuff that Travis Scott did. I mean, my man did a whole concert on Fortnite. Yeah, it's fire. Right, genius and, move, by the way. And oh, we'll talk about. And some the, of the, the business investments behind that. Right. And and so and that's the thing, like top artists are thinking about ways to figure out how to get in front of people where they are on their phones. Uh, Beyonce did a Disney Plus joint, right? Mm-hmm. Did a whole movie in Disney Plus, which a lot of people were on, especially during COVID. You're like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. Right. And of course, social media. So understanding the the time that we are in and that is not going to change anytime soon, like just because some of the uh, some of the numbers may be lower than before, than the peak of everything. Right. We are. This is our new norm. And so we have to figure out how to be creative and how to really get in front of people using the platforms that we have. And these are free platforms. This is not something we have to pay for. This is not something, a a, a paywall of any kind of sort. We just have to be ourselves as well as interacting and embracing the trends and embracing it in our own brand, right? Because that's the key part. Don't just do a trend because it's a trend. Right. Do it that it you incorporated with what your industry is doing, what your niche is doing. Right. Drake, when you look back at that battle, right, he took all the memes and put it into a diss record. He put it as part as his performance. Right. So you're rapping. You see all this stuff. Hmm. You, you totally put that in your brand. 
You didn't make it different. You didn't just become the meme. You yeah. transformed the meme into whatever you wanted it to be about, right? And if you could do that with your brand, the power that you have and the messaging and the storytelling that you can do is unlimited if you could figure this whole social media thing out. Whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't I don't want us to go too heavy on social media, but it really is a big part of things right now. And and the part that I was thinking about is with with that whole move of taking those memes and adding them to his concert or his mm-hmm. performance when he was you know, having that issue with Meek Mill. Yeah. I always think about the connection and the relationship he built with his audience during that time, yeah. right? Like just think about one of the greatest artists in the world is using a meme or a gift that you created. Yeah. Like think about, you're going to go crazy over that. And then you're going to share that with your platform. And, Absolutely. And, and I use the example of, man, regardless of how smart someone is, whenever we're in a mastermind or a large training, the, the collective benefits because we combine our genius, no matter who's the smartest person in the room is, mm-hmm. if we all combine our genius together, we automatically elevate our game. So yep. the fact that he's able to embrace all of those memes and all of the people's creativity, he has millions of designers now. He has millions of writers and creators yeah. helping him as opposed to just the people on his team, which I think is brilliant. And, and, and the, the critical point here too is, and we talked about this during our, our pre-show was he also received a large deal of criticism on social media. Yes. So just as he got the help for the Meek Mill thing, you just go type up the, the memes or the gifts uh, about Drake in your phone and the hotline bling video is going to come up. And that was just a crazy thing, right? Like th- that whole concept. And, and he embraced it. You know, what's funny is that they were saying while they were shooting that video, yeah. He predicted that the internet is going to go crazy from a meme standpoint with it. And he still had fun with the concept. So you, you talk about someone who is whatever perceived to be maybe a little bit cheesy or corny and yeah. still saying like, screw it, I'm just going to be me and continue to walk in that confidently. Yeah. Uh, like the average person wouldn't have confidence if they are the way Drake carries himself in a sense. Right. And I don't mean that in a bad way, yeah. but he does a phenomenal job of like, yo, it's it's dope being me. And, and as a matter of fact, look at the life that I'm living as a result of it. So, yeah, it's, it's that double sided concept that I definitely wanted to add in there from an audience standpoint, as well as he didn't just get there because he's liked. He mm-hmm. actually received a great deal of criticism. And because he was open to embracing it and having fun with it and sometimes laughing at himself when it's necessary, as opposed to getting all upset, you know, that really helped people start to embrace him more and just kind of like fall back a little bit as well. So yeah, I think that part is, uh, is pretty dope. 